not yet sunrise here on Cape Cod on January 20th, 2021. A new day is on us. The inauguration of a new president, vice president are on us and there's hope in the air. I'd like to share some words for reflection today. From 1 Kings 3, at Gibeon, God appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon replied, and now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. Although I'm only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people? It pleased God that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have asked for an understanding mind of, and have not asked for yourself long life and riches or for the life of your enemies and have asked for an understanding to discern what is right, I now, according to your word, will respond. Indeed, I will give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. This is the word and wisdom of God. Give me an understanding mind. Give me a heart of wisdom. After the campaign is over, there comes a moment when a person who seeks to be a leader who has won the victory must look in the mirror of their life and realize how unprepared they are are for the task of national leadership. The job is always larger than our abilities. The piloting of a great country requires more than celebrity status or deal making. A national leader must prepare to make life and death decisions and that is more than most people can handle. These days, the president must be a scientist, a peacemaker, a uniter, and to do the impossible, to bring our nation together and restore our nation's standing in the world. Every choice the president will make will help and every choice will hurt, indirectly deciding who lives and who dies. There is no avoiding it and as a leader, you are responsible. Even the best of presidents and leaders make mistakes and surely the Congress and our 46th President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris will make mistakes. What we pray for is a heart of wisdom that takes them beyond themselves, beyond profit and self-interest to care for the least of these and to treat the vulnerable, even their enemies with great compassion. We pray for the new president's and vice president's heart to embrace the United States and the planet in its wondrous diversity and its tragic beauty and make decisions that will bring healing to our nation and the planet. Solomon's wish was for a heart of wisdom. And that is our own prayer that we have wise hearts, that our 46th president and our national leaders pray for that same wisdom regardless of the political consequences. In a deeply divided nation, a time of protest and pandemic and domestic terrorism, a nation in an upheaval, we must look for common ground. The issues are too large. Health, ecology, an aging population, the graph, gap between wealthy and poor, race, religion, the COVID virus, incivility and polarization and national security. They are so great for any leader or group to go alone. Humility, cooperation and partnership. These are the virtues leaders need 
and we need in our time. May we find common ground. May we have a heart of wisdom.